Hello, this is Math 2231 coming to you from the College of DuPage for the summer of 2020, and this is the lecture entitled The Area Problem. Now, we're going to see there's two kinds of integrals. We've studied one of them already. We've studied indefinite integrals, and we're going to start talking about definite integrals very soon. However, before we do that, we're going to take a look at the area problem. The area problem is to definite integrals what the tangent and rate of change problems are to derivatives. They describe what is happening and are geometrical interpretations. Okay, so let's start off with a function f of x. I'm drawing it here. And in fact, I'm taking f of x to be x squared plus 1 on the interval 0 to 2. And we want to estimate this area. Uh, so that's the green area that we're looking for. It's between the function and the uh, x-axis and those two vertical lines. So that's what we're trying to do. And uh, we can't do this exactly because it's curved, but very soon we'll be able to. But we're going to estimate the area. And we estimate the area by dividing up the interval into n subintervals of uh, equal width. And so what's going to happen is we're going to say b minus a over n is going to be the delta x that we have. Now, if we say b minus a over, and in this case, uh, we're going to uh, break it into, uh, uh, let's see, it looks like it's going to be one, two, three, four uh, subintervals. And so when I break it into four sub-intervals, that's going to be 2 over 4. So each interval is of length 1 half. So you see I'm marking off intervals of length 1 half along the x-axis. Now, I want to estimate these by rectangles, so I have to figure out what am I going to do uh, in for the height of this rectangle. And here you see I'm taking the right endpoint as the height of each of these. And it's the right endpoint. It's going to be the value of the function at the right endpoint of each subinterval. And so we get these rectangles. Now here I was using the right um, endpoint. And um, so we can plug it into the functions and we can figure out what the right endpoint gives us. And if we do that, this is what we get for there are four um, rectangles, so it's going to be the length, which is always one half, times the height, and I plug it into x squared plus one. I get these numbers and I get that this estimate was 5.75. Now, I, and, it, and this is, by the way, an overestimate you can tell from the picture. I could also talk about using the left endpoint, and the left endpoint, uh, again, the length of each interval will be the same. But now I'm taking the left endpoint, and you can see that's going to end up giving me an underestimate. And here is the area if I use the left endpoints. I plug in those numbers. So now I know that the area is in between 3.75 and 5.75. I could also talk about using the midpoint of each interval. So the midpoint of this interval would be... 0.25. The midpoint of this interval would be 0.75. This would be 1.25 and this would be 1.75. And so if I plug those numbers in, I could get the areas associated with the midpoint. And if I plug those um, uh, numbers in, I get this. So you see, I get different estimates, but I know it's between these two numbers and it might be um, that close to that number. Now, the easiest way to get a better approximation would be for us to take more rectangles, increase in. And if your antenna is up, you're thinking, oh, this is going to be kind of like a limit. That's where we're going. So let's double the number of rectangles we use and see what happens. So instead of having four, we're going to have eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And that makes our intervals shorter. Each subinterval now is b minus a, which is 2 over 8. So each subinterval is 1 fourth. So we get this for the right endpoint estimates. We get this for the left endpoint estimates. And we get this for the 
midpoint estimates. So these are the area estimates for each of them. And again, this is still an upper bound, this is still a lower bound, and this is somewhere in between. But you see we're getting a better and better estimate of what the actual area must be. So now it's time for you to do some work. Uh, here I'm asking you to estimate the area between this function and the x-axis on the interval 0 to 4 using n equal 5 subintervals and do it for all three cases above for the heights of rectangles. You're doing it for the left end point, the right end point, and for the midpoint. Quite a bit of work to do, but you know what to do. Let's see how you did. Well, for the right end point, you get these numbers and the area ends up being uh, 28.96. Uh, actually, that's a typo. That should have been for the, uh, let's see, that is the, uh, that is the right endpoint. That's not a typo. This is a typo. Using the left endpoint, this should be a sub L. You should have gotten 22.56. So you say, oh, it's between those two. But actually, you really can't tell uh, which one is an overestimate and which one is an underestimate, although this is the bigger number, so it's probably more or less between those. And if you use the midpoint, you get these numbers, and it is 25.12. You see we're estimating using these um, points. Now, let's talk about what we do in the general case. So if we start out with f of x being greater than, equal, uh, greater than or equal to 0 on a, b, and we divide it into subintervals that are of equal length. Then when I start at x sub 0 is a, x sub 1 is a plus delta x, x sub 2 is a plus 2 delta x, dot dot dot, it keeps on going. The ith interval is a plus i times delta x, dot dot dot, the next to last one is a plus n minus 1 times delta x, and the last one is going to be the point b, but that is a plus n times delta x. So those are the points we're going to be evaluating the function at. And now what we're going, well actually not, those are the endpoints of the interval, but now we're going to pick points in each of those subintervals that is where we're going to be evaluating those. These points will define the height of rectangle in each subinterval. Notice well that these points do not have to occur at the same point each subinterval. So here's kind of a sketch of what we're doing. And so our area is approximately equal to, it is f evaluated at the point in that subinterval times delta x, and each delta x was the same. Now notice that we're adding up all these rectangles, and we've got 1, 2, 3 up to n of them. And so another way to write that is using the summation notation. a is approximately equal to the summation as i equal 1 to n of the heights times the base. And we take n larger and larger, and that means the area we would expect to be the limit as n goes to infinity of the summation i equals 1 to n f of x sub i times delta x. You see, calculus is indeed the study of limits. Now, let's talk about another thing, though. Even though I said it was area, suppose that y equals f of x is negative. And here's an example of that. And if we were to evaluate this using the midpoints, notice that each of the y values is negative. So I'm going to get a negative area. Area can't be negative, but you see this is uh, what the calculation we just did is going to give us. And that's if it's all under here. You might say, oh, well, I'll just take the absolute value. You have to be even a little bit careful with that because here's a function that is negative during part of the time and positive during part of the time. These areas will be positive. These areas will be negative. The net is going to be this value. So what I'm trying to tell you is that that limit really is not necessarily the area. It's the net area of those areas that are below and those areas that are above. And it will share the SIGN of whichever is greater. 
Okay, so that motivates finally our definition of uh, the definite integral. Given a function f of x that is continuous on the interval a, b, uh, we divide um, the interval into n sub intervals of equal length, delta x, just like we were doing. And from each interval, we choose a point x sub i star. Then the definite integral of f of x from a to b is, and here's the symbol and that's the way you read it, the definite integral from a to b of f of x dx with respect to x is equal to the limit as n goes to infinity of those sums. And that limit has to be independent of which i's we pick. So you see this is exactly the limit that represents the net area. And, um, and we have some terminology here. The number a is called the lower limit of the integral. The number b is called the upper limit. And a and b is called the, a to b is called the interval of integration. Now, this is a limit, so it may or may not exist. If the limit exists, it's gonna be a number, not a family of functions. And the reason that we're using this symbol that looks a lot like the indefinite integral is a mystery to be solved soon. In closing, now more than ever, time is precious. Each day must count. Do the math that will make you strong. And now more than ever, take care of yourself and of each other. God bless y'all.